Thank you for choosing THV 11 News at noon. I'm Journey Taylor. We have a lot for you today, but first, something for parents and caregivers. Summer is a great time for kids to relax, but it's also a chance to do things they can't do during the school year. In six minutes, we have everything you need to know about summer camps and activities for your kids before it's too late. A 9-11 first responder suffered from a mysterious medical problem for years. I'm Bradley Blackburn with the surprising diagnosis and treatment now giving him relief. And tonight, James Corden's eight year late night run comes to an end. We're making sure you don't miss the music in the memories at 1222. But before we get to those headlines, let's stop by the weather department. Meteorologist Nathan Scott, good afternoon. What are you watching over there? Good afternoon, Journey. It has been a gloomy start to our Thursday with lots of clouds in place, some drizzle and mist as well. But there's some breaks in the cloud cover down just to the south and east of Little Rock, and that's helping the numbers warm up into the upper 60s, 70 right now in Camden. Meanwhile, it's only 55 in Clinton. These clouds are still trying to produce some light rain, even a few thunderstorms in northwest Arkansas. But what I'm watching is the upper level disturbance pivoting through over Oklahoma that is going to swing its way through central Arkansas as the day wears on and we'll see a rejuvenation of more showers and storms developing through this afternoon into this evening with enough cold air aloft. Some of these storms could become strong, possibly severe. Here's the latest from the Storm Prediction Center and there's a two out of five or slight risk now from Little Rock, Searcy, Pine Bluff, Stuttgart and off to the east. The main concerns out there this afternoon will be for a couple storms to try to produce dime to quarter size hail. Before the storms start to pop up, though, temperatures should be able to climb up into the mid to upper 60s. Hey, I'm talking about some drier weather to close out the work week on your Friday. I'll let you know if that continues into the weekend coming up. Well, thank you, Nathan. Well, now to some developing news. The city of Little Rock's computer system is still down because of what they're calling a security concern. Since yesterday morning, city email and applications have been down, but phone lines are open, so 911 and 311 are working. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. says texts are working around the clock, but didn't indicate when it might be back up. If you need permits, you'll have to go to the department offices on Markham in person. And a THV 11 update, a man accused of leading law enforcement on a wild chase through multiple counties is in custody and the two officers seriously hurt and a resulting crash are out of the hospital. Investigators found this man right here on your screen. That is Frederick Rainey hiding in an apartment in Warren. That's where the chase started in Fordyce came to a dangerous end in Bradley County. After the accident, the two officers had to be taken by air to hospitals in Little Rock. The department hasn't released their identities, but did say that as of last night, both have been released and have returned home. One of them had to undergo multiple surgeries from broken bones and spent time in the ICU. For weeks, we've seen your calls and messages about apartment maintenance and rent prices issues both before and after the tornado. Well, this afternoon, we're trying to help you navigate those problems. THV 11 Sarah Habakowitz spoke with legal experts to clarify what rights renters and landlords have. Arkansas law guarantees renters a certain standard of safety in their home. It also has standards that protect landlords from unruly tenants. Figuring out what your rights are can be confusing. Arkansas Legal Services helps low income tenants with housing issues. Most other states are going to offer renters more rights than Arkansas does, so we work with what we have. We've seen photos of apartment sewage issues, leaky ceilings after rain, and missing doors at apartments in Little Rock. So what are your legal options if you have some of these issues and they continue after making management aware? If it continues not being fixed and ends up causing, you know, some kind of health problem, then you could have the ability to break your lease without. And if you're still in a lease and problems stick around, do you have to pay rent? As long as you're living in the place, your safest option is to continue paying that rent because Arkansas does not have a law that allows you to stop paying that if you're still in the premise. In the last three years, rent in Arkansas has risen nearly 18%. But how much can a landlord raise your rent each lease? As long as there's proper notice, there's not much of a limit, but it still depends. There may be an argument to be made to a judge that, you know, doubling it after a disaster in particular is not really fair. But I do know that landlords and 
apartment complexes are allowed to raise rent. And if your rent spiked right after the tornado, the attorney general tells us in part, quote, in those situations, rate increases can't exceed 10% unless the increases had been announced prior to the emergency. Complaints about price gouging or other issues can be filed with my office. While all of this might seem overwhelming, there are ways to seek help for free. A bunch of those resources are on your screen right now and on THV11.com. And Arkansas Renters United, that last one is an activist group that may be able to help navigate next steps in finding aid. I can help you analyze your situation, provide some res referrals and resources. A lot of good information there. Well, now to something to be aware of when you're on the roads moving forward. State and highway police could start using video cameras to catch speeders, but only in very specific places. An expanded law allows troopers to record videos of drivers in construction zones. Now the cameras won't automatically send you a ticket like they do in other states. The image would instead be sent to a trooper at the end of the work zone, and then they could pull you over and write you up. Now state police say the data will be deleted if the trooper takes no action, just like a current law for school zones. Red light cameras still are not allowed. Summer break for students is just around the corner. Many parents are probably asking, how can I keep my kids busy? I understand now. Well, for working families, having a place to send their kids for the day or an activity to keep them active can be a real help. THV 11's McKaylin Johnson found several local options that offer more than just a place to go. We have so much fun during the summer. Academics, healthy lifestyles, character development, leadership skills, and fun. That's the Boys and Girls Club of Central Arkansas's focus. When we get them at six years old and we keep them engaged till they're 18, that they're prepared for their future. There are six locations across this area of the state. What you see here is the Billy Mitchell Club. There's also Hamilton, Pinnock, Thrasher, Weatherington, and Dalton Whetstone. On top of a wide range of clubs, there's even more activities for younger kids. There's all kinds of games to play. We'll do field trips. And there are special outings for teens. Career trips where they get to go to businesses. Some of the clubs offer summer baseball or basketball leagues and have pools to enjoy the summer heat. <laughs> Even when the summer fades, the clubs are still open. We are open from the summer from 8 to 5. That's our summer hours. We continue on and during the school year. Now over in Benton, the city's Parks and Rec Department has tons of summer programs. We have Little Putters, which is a new program that will introduce them to the game of golf. And then we have Little Olympians, which introduces them to youth track and field. These are for kids aged three to five. For older kids, there are clinics for disc golf and pickleball. And then in the next summer session, we will have youth sand volleyball that they can get involved in. Teens can even be on the other side of things. At age 16, you can actually work for the city of Benton for me and my team. Uh, you can be scorekeepers, adult softball umpires. Uh, we also need youth instructors. Over to Dogtown, the North Little Rock Mayor Summer Youth Program is a longstanding initiative, and it gets students 16 to 24 in the workforce. Jobs are available in three areas, clerical, labor, or recreation. It's just like a regular job. If selected, you'll work 40 hours and get paid minimum wage. Thank you, McKaylin. Well, the deadline for the mayor's North Little Rock Summer Youth Program is May 5th at 4 p.m. Now on our website, THV11.com, you'll find more information on all the programs and links to register. Well, new at noon, iconic talk show host and former mayor of Cincinnati. This is so hard for me to report here. Jerry Springer has died this morning, most known for his afternoon TV show featuring mm, dysfunctional families. Springer began his career as an attorney and politician and served as mayor of the Ohio City for a year. After almost three decades of the Jerry Springer show, the host went on to appear on shows like America's Got Talent, and Judge Jerry, he died at his home in Chicago after a brief illness. He was 79 years old. Well, Jack Texera, the Massachusetts Air National Guardsman accused of posting classified documents online is due in federal court today for a t detention hearing. Prosecutors are expected to argue he is a flight risk and should remain in custody. Nicole Skanga reports. 
Prosecutors released photos of Jack Texera's bedroom at his mom's house outside Boston. They say the pictures show weapons and tactical gear surrounding his bed. The 21-year-old is accused of sharing classified military documents and CIA updates on a social media platform used by video gamers and others. In a newly filed 18-page memo, federal investigators say five years ago, Texera was suspended from high school for talking about weapons, mentioning Molotov cocktails and guns at the school, and making racial threats. That behavior was flagged to local police when Texera applied to obtain a firearm. And the filing also alleges he searched online about mass killings and posted disturbing comments, saying he wanted ISIS to, quote, kill a ton of people. The Justice Department also accuses Texera of trying to interfere with the investigation. DOJ lawyers claim he destroyed evidence, including a laptop and game console, and posted in a chat group a note to delete all my messages. This week, National Security Spokesman John Kirby told CBS Mornings that the scope of the damage is still unknown. And that's obviously deeply concerning to all of us. We want to get uh, as great a grasp on the scope of the universe of documents that are out there. The suspect faces 25 years in prison connected to charges involving the Espionage Act. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, Washington. Well, constant pain and twitching muscles around a surgical scar led doctors to diagnose a new syndrome that doctors say could be widespread and undiagnosed. More on dancing scar syndrome at 1217. But first, before we go, Nathan, what do you see out there? I see a canopy of clouds across Little Rock journey, and these clouds will still produce scattered showers, maybe some thunderstorms out there later today. I'll have more on the timing and talk about what happens for this weekend coming up.